Hi, in this video, I will walk through exactly how much return on investment an automated delta neutral strategy on Aperture Finance can generate. Spoiler, it's not what's advertised on the APR section of the website. I count for the fees each protocol takes, the length of time I'm in the investment, and different collateral ratios. If you don't have a basic understanding of the delta neutral strategies on Aperture Finance, I would highly suggest watching my previous video. Of course, nothing in this video is financial advice and you should always do your own research. I'm presenting my analysis as I understand it and you should never take my or anyone else's word for it. Let's get started. All right, what I'm going to do here is to use the example on the Aperture Finance documentation page and use it to make some of my own calculations in Google Sheets in order to compare the return on investment that I've determined with what is advertised on the Aperture Finance page for this strategy. So what this example aims to do is to explain how the APR of the strategy changes as time goes on in the investment. So if you're familiar with delta neutral strategies, at day zero, I'm only earning the short farm and the anchor rewards at that time. Only after two weeks of spending time in that investment strategy does the long farm APR then trigger. And at that point, the long farm rewards kick in and I'm earning the full APR that is advertised on that strategy. That is shown here in this graph and the example explains this very clearly. So let's walk through the assumptions that are used for this example. I'm gonna take a look at how the strategy works in the first 42 days of investing in it. And assuming that I have a $900 USC initial investment on the M coin underlying asset. It doesn't really matter what the underlying asset is. Um, the price of that asset doesn't really come into the calculations at all. Some of the other assumptions are that I'm assuming a collateral ratio of 200% and I'm also assuming that there's no material price premium or discount between the M coin and the Oracle real world price. I think more importantly though that there's this assumption here that says the short and long farm APRs as well as the mirror and spectrum token price, they remain constant for the duration uh, that I'm in this strategy. And obviously in, in actuality that's not the case. The short and long farm APR is dynamic and subject to change as are the mirror and spectrum token prices. The last assumption here is that the M coin price has low enough volatility such that there is no automatic triggering of rebalances. So any rebalances for liquidation protection or uh, delta neutrality rebalancing, that will eat into the APR of the strategy. So we're assuming all these things in order to, to do this simulation on this strategy. So if I'm depositing some UST in this strategy, I'll probably see a window like this in which Aperture will tell me that the strategy fee, which is a performance fee, is 10%. All that means is that the capital gains or the profits that I'm getting from withdrawing from the strategy, they're taxing that at a 10% rate. So that's just the cut that Aperture takes for me to use the platform. I can also specify this target collateral ratio, and right now that's set to 200%. And at 200%, what that means is if the M coin price increases by 33%, then I might be at risk of liquidation on my short position. I can make that a little bit safer by increasing the slider to the right, say increasing the total collateral ratio to 300%. But how that affects my APR is that it lowers it. So that means the safer my position is, the lower I might get back in return in the APR. And the lower this collateral ratio is, the higher my APR would be. And so all that means is the more risk I'm taking, the more reward I'm getting back. All right, let's move on to the day-by-day -day APR breakdown. And so for day zero, this is the diagram that shows what happens when I initially deposit my UST investment of 900 UST. So it splits it into anchor. Because of my collateral ratio, two-thirds goes into anchor and then the rest goes into uh, purchasing the underlying asset uh, for a long position. And so purchasing the asset, there's a fee that I have to pay. And similarly, um, going on the short farm position, I also have to pay a fee to TerraSwap. So the initial day one position value is a little bit less than I put in because of the transaction fees. So if I look at, if I look at my Google sheet right here, at day zero, my anchor position is 600 UST. Uh, my short position is almost $300 and it's a little bit less because of the transaction fee. And my long position is also almost $300 because of the transaction fee. So I pay a total of $1.80 worth of UST as fees. 
And because this is day zero, I've earned no short farm rewards and no long farm rewards. And my total position value is $898.20. This corresponds to a return on investment of minus 0.2%. Here is the section where I'm defining all the inputs and I guess the constants in this simulation. So here's the anchor APR, here's a short farm board APR, spectrum APR, mirror APR, terra swap trade APR. So these three numbers are what constitutes the long farm APR. Um, and this is the collateral ratio and my initial investment. And here are the fee structures for this strategy. So there's a terra swap fee, spectrum fee, as well as the aperture performance fee of 10%. So that's day zero. All right, so let's take a look at what happens from day one to day 13 in this delta neutral strategy. So from day one to day 13, basically what is happening is I'm just holding a long position on the M coin token. And in the short farm, I'm just sitting here with the SLP token and I'm collecting trading fees from the M coin UST liquidity pool on TerraSwap. So that is one source of profits from this strategy. And then I'm also getting profit from the anchor deposit on my UST, and that's at 32 cents per day accruing in my total position value. So what that looks on the Google Sheet, so from day one to day 13, this is what it looks like. On this column, it's the days. This column shows the anchor position. So my anchor position is increasing by 32 cents per day in UST uh, because of the 19.5% APY that I'm getting. Then I'm also starting to earn short farm rewards and that is being accrued at four and a half cents per day. I know the diagram says 13 cents, but I think there was a typo there. This should be really um, calculated on the short position that I have as opposed to the entire total position value. I think that's what's happening on the diagram. The short farm reward here, which is about 5%, should be applied to this short position here. And that's what I've calculated. And so this is the column showing the total position value of my investment. And at around day five, I'm breaking even on my investment because I had to pay the initial transaction fees. And at day 13, I'm up about $3, which is a return on investment of 0.33%. And how I'm calculating return on investment is the total gain loss of my investment divided by my initial capital. All right, so what happens on day 14? Let's take a look at that diagram. So what happens on day 14 is that in the short farm, Miro Protocol gives back to me the UST that I should have gotten when I opened up this short position on the Mcoin asset. So I get back the 299 UST and that gets paired up with my long position, the Mcoin shares that I'm just holding. That gets paired up and deposited into the TerraSwap mcoin ust liquidity pool in order to start earning rewards and so there is a small fee for that for depositing that using spectrum and so that gets taken out at day 14. after that then i have the lp tokens for staking my liquidity on the mcoin ust liquidity pool and that value is a little bit less than the two paired up because of that spectrum fee so let's take a look at what that looks like on the google sheet so at day 14 which is here I've increased another 32 cents in my anchor position and my long position is now doubled due to the, the UST that has returned to me from Mir after two weeks uh, minus the, the fee that I'm paying. So this is the fee that I've paid, uh, which is proportional to how much liquidity I'm adding into the liquidity pool. And then I'm also still earning short farm rewards. This is now my total position value, which went down a little bit because of this fee that I've paid. And the return on investment at day 14 is about 0.3%. All right, now that the strategy is short farming and long farming, let's see how the total position value of my investment is increasing from days 15 to 42. So if I take a look at this diagram, um, I'm still earning short farm rewards from this position here. Uh, as I'm holding on to the SLP token, I'm also getting returns from the deposit on Anchor at 32 cents per day. And then finally, I'm getting returned from the long farm, which is the trading fees I get back from the Mcoin UST liquidity pool, as I have LP tokens staked there as well. And that results in a 35 cent return per day. Let's take a look at what that looks like on the Google Sheet calculations. So here on days 15 to 42, um, I'm still earning my anchor uh, rewards. And that's just increasing at 32 cents per day. And I'm continuing to earn short, the short farm rewards at four cents a day. 
And then finally, because I've entered into the long form, I'm earning 35 cents per day from the long form. And so this is how my total position value is growing. And at the end of the 42 days, my return on investment is 2.5%. So what that means is that I'm up $22.72 on my 900 UST that I initially put in, and that results in a return on investment of roughly 2.5%. If I continue to extrapolate this into one year, just to see what that ROI looks like, after one year, uh, my ending position value in UST would be about $1,153.59. As I withdraw, I have to pay Aperture for using their service. And after the 10% fee, that results in a balance of $1,128. If I use my ROI calculation on that, that results in a 25.36% return on investment. And so if you were thinking as I was thinking, in this strategy, I'll get the 39.68% after one year. Well, that's not necessarily the case as I've shown here. The best case scenario ROI would be about 25% after one year. And I say best case scenario because all of these inputs I've defined here are subject to change. The Spectrum and Mirror APRs, typically they, these the prices of these tokens are volatile, so it may go up or may go down. And then the trading swap fee depends on the total liquidity in the pool as well as how much trading volume there is. The more trading volume, the more return I'll be getting in this pool. But I think it's safe to assume that these numbers will not go up and that this is kind of like a theoretical maximum return on investment after one year for this particular strategy. And so I can also take a look at how this return would change based on the collateral ratio. So right now I'm at the most risky collateral ratio that I can use. If I change it to something like 300%, then my return on investment will be uh, about a couple of percent less. Usually I think it would be a um, worthwhile trade-off to increase the collateral ratio so that I'm not uh, at risk of liquidation, but at a trade-off of a couple of percent of ROI. All right, that's it for the calculations that I have here. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Did I make any errors? Uh, do you not agree with some of the things that I've done here? I'll leave a link in the description for the sheet so that if you want to, you can go ahead and play around with the numbers to see what the actual return on investment would be for these Delta Neutral strategies on Aperture. I might even make a calculator on my website for this just to have a more visual representation of how certain things change given uh, like a change in collateral ratio or change in APY from Anchor. If I make that, I'll leave a link in the description below for that as well. If you like this, please click the like button and subscribe. As always, stay safe, stay safe, and thanks for watching.